سید گان من ندم جمن سف گان I'm hungry Aren't you? The Germans have gone Oh, looks like it Now all we have to do is to wait for the Russians But it means the war is over Listen What? There's a lark singing High up there It's wonderful It's amazing Oh, yes Well, I wonder if our red heroes have liberated Bruno Because that's where I'm going To my sisters And that's where I'm taking you, Blanca Oh, no, you aren't We're staying here We're going to live here This was my parents' house Now it's mine Surely Don't you understand anything at all? I understand everything. <laughs> everything! Oh, my God. Professor Rusakov. My dear old professor. Are we ill, Semyon Vasilyevich? Acutely. Uh, and, uh... Are we, uh... How shall I put it? Lost? I I irretrievably. Isn't it a beautiful morning, though? Uh, I, I can't see it too well. I've, I've... Oh, oh, Nikolai, I, that, my... you seem to have lost your maps, no, too. No. I think that we should have to get you to a doctor. Oh, I don't think. Um, I really wouldn't trouble you know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. Yes, but it grieves me to see you in this condition. It really it grieves me. Rusakov? Ill in his ditch, whilst history, so to speak, flows round him? Do you know what day? What the date is, Semyon Vasilyevich? April. About the, um... Uh... 20, 24th? Correct. And yesterday, the 53rd Army took Pratsen. How splendid. Now, I would have thought that you as a professor of history... Uh, uh, Pratson was the site of the Battle of Austerlitz. An inspiring thought? No, even Stalin can't take credit for Austerlitz. <laughs> you haven't changed much, have you? Absolutely not at all. Isn't it regrettable? Might one ask, mere curiosity, nothing more, which army you are with? But you do know which army you are with. Uh, the, um, the 6th Infantry Division. Major General Ar Arbyshenko commanding. Oh, oh, oh. Any idea where they are? What? Ah, uh, um, uh, uh, somewhere over there, I should imagine. Um, Semyon Vasilyevich. Oh, oh, do call me Semyon, as you used to. There's all you bright young men and women you used to. Um, I bet you wish you could just crawl back into that ditch and stay there till it's all over. How perceptive you are, Nikolai. You always were, as I remember. Well, Simeon, the 4th Guards Cavalry Corps, the 7th Mechanized Corps, the 6th Guards Tank Army, and your 6th Infantry Division are at this moment preparing for the liberation of Brno. Oh, oh dear. I'm... Prague will fall to us within two weeks, I should say. 
Uh, this, um, this, this map case, um, it isn't mine, you know. I, I picked it up somewhere. Oh, yes? Oh, yes, indeed. As for me... As uh, for you? Well, I'm, I'm just a cook, really. I'm hardly anything more than a sort of glorified cook. <laughs> And not inside my head, of course. In, in, in there, I'm still very historical and uh, philosophical and, and, and all the rest of it. But um, uh, my, my actual body, uh, dear young Nikolai, dear friend, my, my, um, my actual body, well, uh, it just it c cooks. <laughs> um, <clears throat> because I, I have worked my way up from the, from the kitchens to the paperwork. Get in. How extraordinary to run into one of one's ex-students like this, bang in the middle of the war. It I'm, isn't uh, Simeon Vasilievich. I'm extremely frightened, you know. Of what, comrade? Of you, Nikolai. Oh, come, come. What's one poor sick lost cook amongst all these troublesome checks? Are they troublesome? Either you get in and I'll see what I can do for you, or go your own way and leave me compelled to report you. We've wasted enough time. Well, I certainly couldn't go my own way, Nikolai. I, I've never known what it is. Getting lost, you know, is the only weak little flair I, I have in life. So we all noticed at the university. Give him some vodka. <coughs> Where are we?
is how they used to live, Semyon Vasilyevich. Who? The rotten old bourgeoisie? You know, I can't help wondering how you survived the 1930s. Innocent, honest, scholarly. Absolutely scrap material from a revolutionary point of view. <laughs> Intellectual scum. Well, there had to be some survivors, even from a purely statistical point of view, Nikolai. <laughs> One kept one's head down, you know. So did thousands of others, but it didn't help them in the end. I suppose you kept your head so far down there were plenty of influential boots in reach of your tongue. Well, what was the point of being heroic? Would it have been heroic? I started shivering with fright in 1929 and I haven't stopped yet. I mean, look. <laughs> Benish and the rest of his political rabbits have formed a government in Kuzichar. But communists have all the key ministries. Yeah, well, I haven't exactly been keeping up with things, Nikolai. I, I was never very political, you know. <laughs> Byzantium! That was my little corner. Where is your little corner nowadays? I'm a rat catcher. Russian rats. I'm an internationalist. You know, what I like about you fellows is your absolute impartiality. That noble concept, impartiality. What it means in Russia, of course, is that no one is safe from you at all. But uh, let's not bicker, Nikolai. Shall we not bicker? I do believe I hear music. The Nazi beast has fled, leaving behind a gramophone which even now is being pumped by some sturdy peasant. How charming. After the smoke and stench of battle, some sturdy peasant. speak Russian? Mother of God, the Red Army. Requisitioned, raped, or just passing through? This is the house of Bohumil and Francisca Sultitz? Dead, both of them. The Germans? Yes. He was taken in 1942. Madame Francesca died six months later. The Germans requisitioned this house? In 1941. The factory in the village? The Germans, being German, took Mr. Schultes under escort to Vienna in 1941. They made him sign over the factory, what they called legally. There is a daughter, Blanca. I took her away with me after her mother's death. You took Blanca Schultes away? I am her nurse. I suppose I should say I was her nurse when she was a child. God knows what I am now. I think she's a little crazy. I've tried to protect her. I think... Where is she? Playing waltz records in the old ballroom. Are you lot going to take the house now? I'm here to decide that, amongst other things. Colonel Shotkin. Who's the fat one? Rusa Kopp. You're a cook. Cook something. I'm not fat. You're not starving. Oh, well, we liberators, you know. We live off the fat of the land. Oh. Can I uh, take my boots off? Oof. Liberators? You? All the way from Moscow. Semyon, Vasilyevich, Rusakov, madam, definitely not at your service. A little vodka.
Yes, I can only get really drunk and stay that way forever. I am an educated woman, you know. <laughs> well, I don't see why that's good. <laughs> no one is going to treat me as a servant. <laughs> we are supposed to be communists, you know. Rubbish. Oh, I don't say I'm a communist. More a bit of an outcast, you might say. A dud. A failure. A natural born sheep. Driven to live out his days in a somewhat foxy manner. If I'm a slave to anything, it's to the weary consolation of empty rhetoric. My mother intended me for a priest. Yeah. Nature for a poet. And the revolution. Well, wow. I've no idea what the revolution intended me for. Revolutions are for turning underdogs into overdogs, you see. And brand the natural aristocrats of this world as mere curs. Mister, mm. is it Lieutenant Rusako? If you're a natural anything, you're a natural fool. <laughs> How true. How terrible. Are you a cook or aren't you? And if you are, can you do it drunk? Isn't the local drink uh, something miraculously potent called Slivovitsa? I wonder if those Nazi buggers left any behind. You're drunk enough already. They will never be drunk enough. I doubt if you can find me a single Russian who would think so. <laughs> Good God. It only takes a few glasses the morning after and one takes off again. <coughs> like a bloody rocket. I shall be weeping in a minute. I know the signs. Nothing but a windy fool spewing words to hide the dark void of the soul. The dark soul of Mother Russia! Blanca Sultan? Yes. Colonel Shotkin? Yes. What a magnificent room. Is the war over, Colonel Shotkin? For you, it is. What are you doing in this house? I think that we would like to use it for a little while. We? The Red Army. My unit needs temporary headquarters. Where is Dr. Benish? In Kuzichup, with his provisional government. And Jan Masaryk? Why do you ask? My father knew Jan Masaryk. We all loved him. I believe Masaryk is the Minister of Foreign Affairs. So, we are free. You spent your childhood here? In this house? It seems very dreamlike. So does my own childhood in Kiev. And then I went to Moscow. I wanted to be an archaeologist. That old woman in the kitchen. Milena? She's not so old. 
she looks like a peasant. But then when she speaks... <laughs> yes? Was she rude to you? Do you know why the Germans took your father? Isn't that an absurd question? They took anyone who... Who what? You are so stupid! And of no doubt you're a spoiled, silly child. Brought up to what? Vanity and privilege. And then one day, the Nazis arrive. And now they've gone. And my parents are dead. And this is my house. Spoiled, silly, and ignorant. <laughs> You will instruct that old woman to clean and prepare a room for me. Tomorrow she can make a start on the rest of the house. My driver will help her. You might even try a little dirty work yourself. One doesn't instruct Malena. Not about anything. She is not a servant. If you don't, I will. Colonel Shotkin. Colonel Shotkin. Will you dance with me? ještě více upevňovat bojovou spolupráci Československé armády s Rudou armádou a vidím vzor... Do you get the drift of it? Here and there. Ah, oh, God, you can drink, I will say. How else do you unite the scattered fragments of the soul? Drinking to me is a kind of research, Comrade Bronovit. A psychological research. With some men, it's a brutish business. But with Semyon Vasilievich, as the Colonel is prone to address me, vodka is the mirror of the heart. What a clown. Ah, oh, well, clown. What are you in? Shakespeare's plays, clowns, you know. Thank God there's a new generation coming up. You're right. The revolution can do without people like me. 
Those who stand on the spiritual heights, Brodovich, turning their careworn faces to the stars. Just one more sniveling, bombastic professor. Now, if you despise the life of the mind, I despise bullshit. You know, this sub, this sliver of it, sir, isn't at all bad, is it? Mm. A bouquet. Somewhere, would you say, between ah, rusty nails and dog's vomit? Uh, did you see that girl? Girl? In the, the big room at the front. Is he barely room there? Dancing to a gramophone. On and on and on. Dancing. I glimpsed an angel for a moment. I was crawling around on all fours, looking for a lavatory. An angel, Brodovich, not dancing, floating. One looked, one adored, one reluctantly withdrew with an aching bladder. I wonder what that colonel. Nikolai Shutkin has in mind for me. <sighs> I'd be like the mouse that the cat paralyzes with a quick bite in the spine, then drops in a corner. Something to relieve life's huge boredom later on. Yes. Shotkin is feline. I've been racking my scrambled brains for the word. <laughs> Well, how long is it since you had a woman? Proletarian car, sure, foy. Desecrate not these poor old hairy ears. What about the spoils of war, eh? <laughs> the phrase has an antique a ring, brother, which I take it you mean rape. Primitive boy, notice your disrespect for women. Notice how you speak of having them. You give the impression of a an entire Russian horde compressed into the itching body of a single half-baked Kolhoznik. Fly on you. Mind you, in my time, years ago, I did have a fat cow of my own, my very own, brother. She married me because I had a whole room to myself. A whole room. And in Moscow, too. Imagine the sense of space, of high living. Then she denounced me. She got the room. And I got ten years. Happily, mistakenly commuted to three later on. Well, that was the way ladies went about things in those days, Brodovich. About the girl. I can't help it. I'm consumed with anxiety for my skin. Ah, uh, shotgun lover. No, he won't! Ah, oh, you're busted, aren't you? I am not in need of it. What is it? You prostate? Yeah, there are men, Brodovich. I am possibly the first you have encountered who are facetidian. That's right. Prostatitis. Comrade Brodovich, do not provoke me. I have no reserves of violence to bluster with. My wounds are not in the balls, but in the soul. Oh, the soul of Mother Russia. Correct them, peasants. The soul of Mother Russia. I wonder what Chekhov would have made of him.
I'm sorry there is no hot water yet. Good morning. I got some from the kitchen. You did? Why not? Why not that young man you have with you? Huh. He's my driver. The telephone doesn't work yet either. It will. Sometime today, probably. Will peace be declared or signed or what? How do they do it? There would be a formal surrender. And Hitler? I'm sure he won't let himself be taken alive. And the others? The Soviet Union and her allies will try them. You wouldn't think it needed a trial. I hope they shoot them all. So do I. Who's that unhappy looking soldier you have with you? The middle aged man with his hair sticking up in spikes. He has a most peculiar manner. I've never seen a man shaved before. Who is he? He's just an old friend that I picked up in a ditch, but 30 kilometers from here. But he is an officer. Kind of an officer. Well, that's all right then, because I invited him to breakfast with you and me on the terrace. You did what? Before the war, we often had breakfast on the terrace in fine weather. Mother and father and me and Milena. And guests, more often than not. Don't you think one should resume civilized habits as soon as possible? Oh, yes. Civilized habits. Your people must have found the war a tiresome interruption. They killed my father, and my mother died because of that. She was too unhappy to live without him. Can't you understand? I'm sorry, Blanca. On the terrace, then, in ten minutes. It's a little fresh being April and we only have bread and tea. But the sky's blue. It was lovely yesterday. Gift from God. For Russians? The Germans had looked after the hothouses. I went to see this morning. I expect they liked peaches. <laughs> I'm sure they did. Uh, Semyon Vasilievich Rosakov, uh, at the service of humanity, freedom, and justice. <clears throat> Byzantine history, a lifelong passion, melancholy, passive, a disgusting urge to wag his tail and please everyone. Real tea. Hangover, are we? You look a bit excitable. I often find, madam, that a shave in really hot water disperses those other fumes. In this case, last night's Slivovitsa, a truly abominable potion. But on it, one climbs, if one can speak of climbing a liquid, onto the peaks, the pinnacles. Humble man, repressed as he is into the bargain, strives for a little beatitude. There you are, you see. I told you he was a professor. One of those who makes up for empty heads with a pitiable gush of words. What a neat turn of phrase you have yourself, Miss Milena. Whatever would we be without the Treaty of Versailles? Lieutenant Rosako. Oh, Simeon, if you please, Miss Schultes. The uh, commission is notional for cooks. And I always insisted on informality with my students. I thought Lenin would have approved. Ooh. We must wait for Colonel Shotkin. I would do anything to ingratiate myself with Colonel Shotkin. Were he an octopus, I would lick his eight boots from morning till night. He can still jabber at this hour in the morning. I really don't understand what you're talking about, Semyon. Uh, well, the great thing about modern warfare, so mobile, so uncompromising, is that here and there you come across 
small pockets of territory which somehow have been bypassed by the unheeding juggernaut itself. How fortunate we are to enjoy one such small pocket. It's none too warm, of course. <laughs> Breakfast in ten minutes, I told Colonel Shotkin. El fresco. Well, punctuality. Well, we Russians, you know. <laughs> May I ask, have you um, round your way through a page or two of our literature, um, Miss Schultes? Blanca. Pushkin. Lermontov. The unquenchable Gorky. <laughs> Blanca. Well, of course. I had a Russian governess. A poor exile. A piece of flotsam washed out of our country on the Bolshevik tide. Born and bred in Berlin. Oh, do forgive me. I didn't mean to take off like that. Uh, such a romantic. M -m -may, may I say how lovely you look this morning? How fresh. One tries to have simple reactions, you know, and the rhetorical mood, even I can't keep it up. Thank you. And so young, too, I imagine. No. I'm 18. Oh, yes. Quite mature. Do forgive me. But young, I meant to be shot, Kenid. And you crawl out of your bunker one morning, and Miss Malena here told me, and before you know where you are, shot, Kenid. It is cruel. I had a similar experience in an otherwise rather hospitable ditch. Are you two gentlemen enemies? Haven't you noticed his cap? Now, just a minute, you. What does he mean? Nothing at all, my love. What do you mean? NKVD, since you're 18. Oh, don't be a fool, one. And don't you be rude to her. I grovel, I grovel. I grovel. By all means. Anything that comes naturally to you. May I sit down? What beautiful roses. And in April, too. Those Nazis. They didn't leave much. A little tea, a few maggoty bones. What is it? Soldier Hamburg. A lemon. I haven't seen one since. Look, Milena. It is poetic. Who ever thought the day would come when lemons would grow on security officers? Whatever will he sprout next? Slice it up, Milena, and we'll have some. Tea with lemon. There's less juice in this poor lemon than there is in Comrade Rosakov. All the way from where, Colonel? Georgia. No, Georgia. The mountains. The shashlik. Thank you very much, Colonel Shotkin. I bet General Eisenhower has lemon in his tea every morning. How civilized this table looks. Such trouble you must have gone to, dear young lady, for two weary soldiers still reeking of cordite, still reeling from the terrible sounds of Armageddon. Oh. Simeon Vasilievich. Yeah. Shut up. Before the war, we often used to sit at breakfast and plan the day. Of course, my father usually went to his factory. You know, Colonel Shotkin, he built houses for his workers. And a sports ground, a swimming pool, a club, a clinic. All the workers had shares in the factory. It was a model enterprise. I don't think there was anything quite like it anywhere in Czechoslovakia. Everyone said what a progressive man he was. And what did the factory produce? Irrigation equipment. Very advanced irrigation equipment. 
quite ahead of its time. What's in that cardboard box under the table? I shall make this house exactly as it used to be. My father was wealthy, so I must be wealthy. He said, wealth is not immoral in itself. It depends on how it is used. There used to be such lovely balls. We'd have a band from Prague and lanterns in the trees. I neither know nor understand the Soviet Union, Colonel Shotkin. But life here was gracious. That's the word. Through the eyes of a child. Wasn't it, Milena? It certainly was, my dear. There you are, you see. Milena wasn't a child. But I don't know what you intend, Colonel Shotkin. I sincerely hope that we shall not inconvenience you. How one does yearn, absolutely yearn for the gracious life. But I remember war nothing. doesn't end well. just like a broken nightmare. Where have you two been since the Germans moved in here? We managed to get away with Madame Schultes, to my mother's house, in a small village about 25 kilometers from here. After Madame's death, we stayed there. It was quiet. You should be honest with us, Colonel Shotkin. She deserves your respect. <laughs> but you respect no one, do you, Nikolai? And we are not permitted to respect ourselves either. The weak are either crushed or become fawning caricatures of human beings. And the strong. Well, look at you, Comrade Shotkin. Ten years haven't changed you either. How well I remember you as a student. Watch him, watch him, I said to myself. So you think I'm strong, do you? Well, what counts for strength? You have a little bit of power. And imagine you've rearranged any decent values you might once have sincerely held in the name of that higher morality we call self-interest. Were you running away, Simeon? I don't know. Whom do you despise most? Me or you? Myself, yes. I can have you shot. You realize? Do you know what you are? Objectively. <laughs> I wonder how many poor Russian heads ache with the clang of that word, objectively. I mean, do firing squad use objective or subjective bullets? And by the way, am I, am I dreaming this house? You, that girl, the peculiar absence of war from these parts? Am I still mercifully in my ditch full of vodka? I mean, what's going on? Or should I say, why isn't something going on? Patience, patience. I mean, if there were a few mountains, we could be in Switzerland. If only we were. A nice little apartment in Zurich. Growing old gently, far away from the moral and intellectual squalor of life in Moscow. Yes. Yes. One is already beginning to anticipate the life after the war. It's very human. I'm sorry I slapped you. Truly. Shame to myself.
Come in. You're upset? I'm sorry. You humiliated him. I apologize to him. It was true what Milena said. You should respect me. I do. I assure you. I don't think Lieutenant Ruzakov was being cynical. Oh, yes, he was. Unjustly. The Rusakovs always wallow in their sense of having been abused by life. myself against the subject of Rusakov. Well, I like him. Oh, it's one-man comedy. Very nearly a farce. Then that's his tragedy, isn't it? Is there such a thing as a just cynicism? I expect I meant justifiable. Is he worth so much scrupulous concern? Isn't everyone? Including those Nazi war criminals that you hope will be shot Go away, please. Ah, well. I was going for a walk. You don't seem to have anything to do here. Why don't you go away and leave us? In a few hours, I shall be militarily speaking in the same predicament as Rusakov. could be. Aren't you supposed to be here? Oh, yes. But I have certain warnings, too. Semyon is a deserter. Technically. He certainly isn't where he should be. So I have been playing with him a little. And I'll get him out of it somehow. He was as ineffectual a professor as he is a soldier. Oh, we used to make fun of him at the university. And then, well, sometimes the habit coarsens. You begin to make people squirm. You rationalize your satisfaction in their misery as if it isn't because someone is weak or foolish or naive, it's because they deserve to suffer. You know, they're invited. Why was he funny in the first place? He isn't stupid, and he mocks himself all the time. What made you all pick on him? Was he a bad teacher? No, he was a good teacher. At any rate, he was a good historian and articulate, but he lost his way in his own theories. We wanted to know what he thought about the revolution, about what we were doing in Russia. He used to make his eyes glaze over, I can tell you. But there's some personal antagonism between you and him. Well, he never troubled to understand what was going on. He was incorrigibly bourgeois. Rubbed everyone up the wrong way with his pedantic, moralizing, and lofty principles. We thought him squeamish. This city was proud to be thought squeamish by Marxists. It's all ten years ago. I can't believe. by criticizing Rusakov. We shall be dining in the ballroom tonight. Will you ask Semyon if he'll clean the chandelier? 
It's filthy. And when it's clean and lit up, it's like a huge cluster of diamonds. Dining. Clean the chandelier. I think one should distinguish carefully between the Wehrmacht and the Gestapo. Don't you? The Wehrmacht was always most correct. Personally hurt by the Germans, Blanca. Personally? Physically. Oh no. Oh no. I have to make an inspection of the grounds. I keep having the strangest sensations. My mind blurs. I don't feel as if the last five years have happened at all. Then I only have to look around me, don't I? I keep imagining myself 18 without the war. I don't hallucinate. I just keep almost hearing and seeing another life. Music, voices, people laughing. I smell fresh cherries everywhere in this house. Of course, it's my father's death, isn't it? I have such a vivid memory of him feeding me cherries on the terrace where we had breakfast. When I saw the roses in the hothouse this morning, I wasn't surprised at all. They're a special kind. Mother was, what did she call it? Hybridizing. I was so delighted I could have eaten them. Can you imagine a Nazi officer hybridizing? My sense of where and when I am keeps jumping about. Nothing's changed for me since my parents died. I haven't grown. I've aged five years without developing. There was nothing at all in Milena's village for a child like me. Nothing. They were dumb, grim people prejudiced and superstitious. Catholic peasants with ancient wooden heads. I used to hide in the woods and scream till my throat was sore. what I said about tonight. It embarrasses me. Childish games. You must do as you wish. I embarrass myself. I'll get them to help you.
Oh, I see. I get the shadow there. You can have the windows if you like. Damn sight more work. But less vertiginous. What? At the top. Now, that girl could be my daughter. And the colonel could be my priest. This one, uh, this one wash ballroom floors. You don't expect me to polish it, do you? Nice bit of wood. Well, you can lean your ladder. It has support, do you see? Yours has got those cords. Huh? Ha! <laughs> so good! I don't think you've got any choice, comrade. You raise the Colonel's blood pressure just by existing. From the top of this ladder, I still couldn't reach that chandelier. We don't want to damage it, do we? Looks to me like an irreplaceable piece, genuine crystal. Don't want to damage Rusakov either. Get on with the windows. Yeah, I'll hold the ladder steady for you. I'll break your bloody neck for you. I can't remember the last time. Oh, I understand the nobility of labor. You and I have heard a lot about that, haven't we, Brodovich? Who with the Communist Party would glorify the most notoriously hated activity in human experience? <laughs> oh, but don't misunderstand me, Miss Vilena. Salvation through suffering is a Russian obsession, as in everything else which bears on the suppression of joy. Now, the Bolsheviks are not original. Thousands of cockeyed Russian holy men have been peddling the idea for centuries. True joy is meant to be achieved through humility and service to one's fellows. Now, that is where the spiritual catch comes in before you know where you are. Humility is humiliation, and service is servitude. I wrote to Stalin once along those lines when Titus a tick, but had the presence of mind to burn the letter. Are you saying the party's no better than the Tsars and the Orthodox Church? I can see you have more than mincemeat between your ears, Bonovich. You divide my message. Look at that crystal, how it shines. You know, I look on that girl as if she were my very own daughter. If Benish doesn't lose all his marbles at Kozhet, say she has a wonderful life in front of her. She has, has she? Oh, I'm not insensitive to her, to her condition. Well, then? Forgive me, but you know what some people have experienced these last five years. It's Blanca we're talking about. I will say, I hope she doesn't have the added misfortune of falling in love with Shotkin. I'd get irrational. I'd have to do something. The man's a criminal. She should go to America. Her uncle has a factory there. Now he got out when those pigs marched into Sudetenland. She should go to America and take me with her. Ah, oh, America. Oh, what do you know about it? One dreams, madam. One dreams. I can't see you making your way there. Not by any means. Some small Midwestern college. You know, gracious buildings, a quiet campus. A bell tolling somewhere as one bends over one's books of an evening. Baseball. I could look after her. Phi Beta Kappa. Drum majorettes. Hollywood, martinis, um, pastrami, bagels, um, uh, slinky women. Um, She'd need someone to look after her. Um, an ice cold martinis at faculty parties, deferential students, Professor Rusakov, whose course on the decline of Soviet literature and the myth of social realism 
is a savage indictment on the fate of the arts in that country. <laughs> hit me! Go on, go on, hit me! <laughs> oh, bloody bitch, dear old friend, dear comrade. I, I didn't mean to bring you down. It was your expression and the look in your eyes. It was all of misguided, miserable, wretched Russia staring out at me. The envy, the malice, the contempt, the violence, the cruelty, the... Oh! It'll be the firing squad for you! Education. Look at him, a mouse fart with a diploma. Tail rag, do you want my boot up your ass again, comrade? Yes, of course I do. Come on. Come on down and kick me again. I dare you. I invite you. I beg you. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? The free spirit in its travail, dear lady, craves humiliation as the baby puckers its tiny lips around the nipple. You think Blanca is a trifle cuckoo? Tell me till she's a novice, an unformed beginner. Rizarkov has been slowly pickling in insanity since 1919. Things have been building up, I can assure you. A rare old head of steam. It's a wonder it hasn't blown my ears off before now. It's true that history is a mighty antagonist, but people, most people do not exactly have an historical view of themselves. No, the still small flame of the individual soul, madam, is trying to illuminate its own humble patch. There were plenty of divine fools in the time of the Tsars, but your Zarkovs, I must insist on explaining, they rejoice in an even higher form of idiocy. They aspire to sainthood in the absence of a religion. Their little stub of a candle burns even in windbags like me. We have to be crass and abject and unself-seeking. We have to inflate ourselves and strut and posture because we've got so much to hide. We can only take refuge in the grotesque. I love Brodovich's boot. I want Brodovich's boot. It inspires me. If I were musical, I would sing songs to it. If surrealism were permitted in our country, I would exhibit Brodovich's boot in a piss pot. Watch! Well, don't look so shocked. It's the only way to treat them. Them? Yeah. You find them all over the place. In Russia? In the Soviet Union. Poor man. They spend their lives crawling through the loopholes. What loopholes? In the system. But how can you treat him like that? Well, didn't he ask me? Didn't he provoke me? Well, I suppose so, but, but then he's not all there, is he? Oh, he's all there, all right. Well, he's got a funny way of being all there. It's just the dregs of the old system, do you see? No. And he's relying on Colonel Shotkin to get him out of it. And so what? He's not just a wandering old drunk, you know. He's a deserter. A deserting cook? <laughs> Cooks are notoriously gun-shy. Isn't everybody? Well, cooks are. And what's to become of Blanca? And me? See that Red Army soldier down there? He looks as if he's going to drop off. Ah, oh, it's one of my men. <laughs> Supposed to be what we call restoring communication.
Shouldn't we go down? No, I don't think so. What if he's hurt? It's unlikely. You don't know. No, I doubt it. Where are the others? <laughs> he's drunk. You look at him now, he's got a bottle out now. Where are the others? What others? Soldiers. There won't be any. Yet. It's not possible. This whole district is in a kind of uh, quarantine. And how else to describe it? I don't understand. Well, nothing, Miss Terry. I didn't think the end of the war would be like this. I'm cold now. I'll row us back soon. Why did we come out on the lake? Didn't you suggest it? You did. There's a special intensity about moments of peace in wartime. You want to question me? Do I? You want to make love to me? Do I? You don't know whether I know anything. That's true. Whether you'd be taking advantage of me. I wouldn't wish to do that. Those religious peasants I told you about didn't stop them rotting. Well, you could hardly be ignorant about sex after all. My mother saw to it, I was told. And then there's one's body. Milena says the Red Army is raping and looting everywhere. But your soldiers are barbaric. I suppose neither better nor worse than any other conquering army. The Germans devastated Russia. The troops are bitter and angry. Their privations, their sufferings have been beyond endurance. We are not the enemy. We are still a very backward country. A wild, stinking horde of dangerous animals, Milena said. The Americans wouldn't be like that, she said. Oh, the Americans won't rape. They'll buy. Our Tartars and Mongols violate. The Americans negotiate. So? You defend your men. No, I think the cultural and moral condition of our troops is, uh, it's disgusting. Give us another 50 years, we'll try and improve. I am a little in love with you, Nikolai. And I with you. It isn't sex. It has to be that, too. I shall kill myself if the Nazis take you away. Nazis? What did I say? Nothing. We 
we will have a dinner party tonight, won't we? I promise. And Fanny Semyon Rosakov, too. <laughs> While I was sober, Nikolai, <clears throat> I didn't want to spoil your fun. Have I said a word this evening? Have I said one single word? It's made a very agreeable change. Shall I spoil your fun, old apparat chick? You can always try. Shall I spoil his fun, Blanca? Bonifish is drunk, you know, back there in the kitchen. Bonifish, too. Oh, yes. I let him humiliate me this afternoon. Well, this morning. We all know you're irresistible. Oh, he's been cock-a-hoop ever since. It's a tendency he has whenever the opposition is puny. I'm ashamed of you, Simeon, picking on a bully like that. <laughs> Thing is, Blanca, according to Bronovich, This house is going to be turned into an interrogation center. Well, that's a relatively polite name for it. I should think um, execution center might be a more appropriate term. And that's what my gifted ex-pupil is here to set up. To interrogate whom? Rodovich is lying. Boasting. Your he sweats with excitement when he talks about it. To interrogate who else but the enemies of the Soviet Union, the Communist Party, the state, the inviolate wisdom of Comrade Stalin? Oh, there's an endless list of things you can turn out to be an enemy of in our country. And having discovered revolutionary justice, you can be sure we will export it to Poland and Czechoslovakia and Hungary and Romania and so on and so on. Oh, that's all, by the way. I mean, I sat here all night watching you two dancing together, gazing into each other's eyes. She loves he loves him not! Put that damn gun away. All right! Rodovich is gone. He's gone looking for a woman. I'm sure you understand that, don't you, Nikolai? You give me that gun. That's what we call an ambus. <laughs> Stop it! You used to be a bit of a gambler, Nikolai. What about the one who gets the last pendant? Gets the girl. She's mad. No, oh, go, go. You don't want her. You want her! What about the last one to shoot the last pendant? Gets the next shot. Nikolai. Sit down or get out. Is it true what he said about this house? And you? Your Dr. Benish will compromise with us. He has little choice. But there are always misguided individuals who will try to resist. We have our policy. 
so did the Nazis. <laughs> oh, dear me, you shouldn't say things like that. That's most undialectical. Go on, Nikolai, tell her. Tell her the difference between Nazi atrocities and communist atrocities. Hmm? Tell her the difference between communist freedom and bourgeois freedom. Tell her how the meaning of words is miraculously transformed, according to your point of view. He was always something of an ideological wizard. Blank. Let, let us not delude ourselves that he believes in everything. So how can he be as he is? I doubt if he is cruel by nature. He's not one of those sadists ready to serve any regime that will feed him victims. He's not some mediocrity trying to compensate with power for his lack of uh, <laughs> gifts. You can't point a finger at the Shotkins and say he's been, uh, he's been conditioned, he's been uh, uh, mystified, he's a kind of a political psychopath. The Shotkins are by no means either fooled by the system or slaves to it. It's true that mediocrity rises to the surface in Russia like scum in a cesspool, but Nikolai is brilliant! I'm not insensitive, and I do believe he's in love as well. And is the professor in love too? What a drunken, sweaty, pathetic creature you are, Simeon. Clinging to survival and flaunting it. And dressing up self-loathing as self-mockery. And sidestepping any kind of responsibility for anything. You won't be a survivor of this war. At best, you'll be a sordid remnant. A moral scarecrow. A gibbering eunuch. A squeaking bag of sexual envy, not least of all. And you propose to do your obscene work in this house. He kissed me! He shit! He shit on my mouth! I swallowed him! He's inside me! <laughs> oh, what have you done, Rusakov? Has she had to know what? The truth. Oh, you have the truth. The facts. But you dream of having her yourself. No! You liar. <laughs> I just wanted to ask one of you people. Yes? How you can torment and degrade others. Perhaps we're insane. Soviet reality. I rather enjoy your hatred, you know. Why? Because you're handsome and powerful and self-confident. Because you're secure and privileged. Or because you're devoid of feeling. But you surely don't think that these things matter in relation to the prisoners, do you? You enjoy my hatred because as soon as I show it, I'm guilty. And my hatred of you is really my own shame burning itself out. What I feel for you is the accumulation of everything I've seen and heard, every rumor, every whisper, each missing colleague, friend, relative, and the thousands of anonymous ghosts haunting Russia. I dare not even kill you. For more than 15 years. Vasilievich, there is no secret. If I were your prisoner. But you are my prisoner. 
And she? Now I'm afraid that she is insane, don't you think? I can't tell you how I've achieved my extraordinary detachment. I haven't the faintest idea. I agree with just about everything you say. Did I even turn my head when she ran out? You all collaborate so. It isn't only because you're helpless. Should we finish that absurd thing off? your people move in when the telephone rings you wouldn't know I suppose that General Patton's forces are in Western Bohemia <coughs> that stir your imagination you win do I win what and what I suppose the old woman's looking after the girl. I suppose so. How do I win, Simeon? What's in the box, Blanca? No. What's in there? <laughs> My father. It's my. Your brain is addled, Rusakov. Your impressive moral outrage is acutely embarrassing. You aren't even a woolly idealist. Nothing so disarming. Everything about you is ambiguous. Just now, for instance, you knew what was in that box. Do you know what kind of point you were trying to make? Look it up. Listen to her. What on earth kind of confusion are you in? You disappoint me. You really do. We are not antagonists. We are complementary. You might try asking yourself where we'd be without each other. It didn't all simply begin with Stalin or Lenin. It's been there all the time. We have the most intimate relationship imaginable, you and I. Could we exist without each other? I often look into the eyes of men like you during the long nights that we share in prison and think, the fellow knows by any decent standards he is a morally superior being. Yet how would he know that if I were not here? I don't have a meaning in the scheme of things. I have a modest function, do you see? Is that plain? Isn't that honest? The amazing thing is not that we are so depraved, but that you are. Every single one 
of the thousands of Rusak cops. Oh, don't look so anguished. The next generation of Rusak cops will speak for you. You'll all be canonized in the West one way or another, and those who get out will thunder from their lofty moral pulpits. Your predicament is just that you haven't the courage to raise your voice. You'll never be heard. And you can't forgive yourself. Your ego needs it. Semyon Vasilievich Ruzakov, at your service. Lieutenant, Lieutenant, I didn't see anything. I promise you. Oh, but I did. I saw that I really had always envied him. This season comes to an end next week with the first production of Mercer's last work. An English journalist and an Israeli professor fall in love, but as their relationship develops, they discover they have opposing views on Israel's treatment of the Palestinians. A dinner of herbs, the Mercer play, next Thursday at 9.30.